Hi everyone, so welcome to the town hall for today. I usually post a little notice an hour before, or 20 minutes before. Today it is spontaneous, 321. Uh, I have some interviews later in the day, so I wanted to do uh, a town hall while I had time to go ahead and knock it out. Uh, sometimes doing it at eight o'clock at night can be a little problematic because I still have work to do after the town hall and then I gotta get enough sleep to get up uh, and be on the air the next day. So. We'll let folks join in and then we will get started momentarily. Welcome in to the new normal town hall. So welcome in to those of you who are joining us so far for an impromptu uh, town hall. Again, I usually post a little notice saying when I'm going to do it, but today it was spontaneous. I've got some work to do later this afternoon, had some time now, so I said, let's go ahead and do it. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm feeling quite overgrown. Uh, haven't had a haircut in a minute, so trying to maintain the mane, if you will, uh, with a little gel and hairspray. So uh, what we usually do, if you are new to this, is we bring in folks to talk to us about their new normal. Uh, one thing I wanted to share with you guys was earlier today, and let me see if I can pull this up right now. I got a message from an individual who said, and this is a, a man who lives in Puerto Rico, I think this is it. Yeah, who said, uh, David, I live with my kids, I'm reaching out to you, I've been calling the Department of Labor. Um, he called, he actually sent me a screen grab. He called 300 different times and couldn't get through to them. Uh, in fact, wait, I think he sent me, I, I think, do I have the screen grab? Yeah, look at that. There's the number he called. 300 times, you see the 300 there? <laughs> 300 times he called. So um, anyway, when I posted it earlier today, there were so many people who reached out and said, hey, listen, I'm having the same story. Uh, I have to tell you, I have been, um, filled with uh, just a really warm, good feeling uh, watching the response to that because so many people reached out to that individual to offer support. Uh, now, I will be quick to tell you, uh, you know, GoFundMe page is not something, I, I don't share GoFundMe pages only because if I share it for one person, to be fair, I gotta share it to everyone. Um, and in sharing this man's story, I wasn't trying to raise money for him. I was simply sharing his story and I knew there would probably be other people who have stories like him, but probably a half dozen people have reached out to him directly wanting to help him, his wife and their two kids. So, uh, it just, it's a really good feeling for me to watch other people want to help folks, right? When, when the reports lead people to help other people. Uh, so I, I just, I love watching that. Here we go, let's try and bring in our first guest. Oh, I got through, David, how you doing? I'm well, sir, what is your name? My name's Hector Rodriguez, I'm in New Jersey. Okay, what do you do for a living? I'm actually, my real job, I'm, <laughs> I'm a fire captain. For, I'm a firefighter in New Jersey, and part-time I do uh, armed security for a uh, nursing facility up in North. So are you at the nursing facility today or the fire department? No, I'm at the nursing facility now. Okay, so tell me about your new normal. Well, obviously I'm an essential employee, so right. I'm, I'm constantly at work, both like this, and even at the firehouse. At the firehouse, we actually have the bigger respirators. Right. So... Um, not too, uh, too much the way other people are with their new norms, you know, um, just gotta say, I've been trying to get on with you because being from Puerto Rico, born from, uh, Manati, where I have my family from, um, I gotta tell you everything you do for the Puerto Ricans on the islands, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. You know, thank you. Manati. I was actually, um, uh, I got married last year over there and I was actually, uh, happy I was able to witness the uh the ricky movement of down there to get him out and uh, that was pretty pretty wonderful during my marriage and that was uh, something that was something to watch wasn't it 
Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. I got to say, though, from your professional opinion, do you yeah. see our people from the islands doing the same thing with Wanda, though? No. No. No, okay. Okay. no I, but, but, but listen, here's the thing. Um, there's a lot of discontent with Oh, are we losing him? Maybe we lost him? Yep. Is he there, I see you there he is. The discontent with Wanda uh, is not to the level that it was with Rosselló. You understand that, right? Right. I'm just looking at that from there's still the corruption that, you know, you're bringing up to light. You know, it's yeah. like amazing. Yeah. You know, part of me, I got to be honest with you, Hector. I, I sit here sometimes and I wonder, can it be fixed? It's so right. ubiquitous. It seems to have infiltrated every agency. Sometimes it's so overwhelming that I sit here and I wonder, can it be eradicated? Right? And, and right, right. So how many layers deep do you have to go to get rid of all of it? Uh, so, you know, listen, the governor has won praise and a lot of, uh, you know, discontent from people who are not happy with how she's handled the situation. But one thing that has made her different than Rosselló is Rosselló, he inherited a mess and he went through a hurricane. But Rosselló was constantly reacting. Vasquez has been more proactive in terms of the curfew that she put in place way right, right. before anybody else. And the curfew, the curfew is really what's working uh, because they don't have the tests. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't, you know, they're financially uh, in the hole given the bankruptcy. But that curfew, and because the people are following it, that curfew has made all the difference in the world for them. No, so, definitely. My dad's in Manati and my mom's in Dorado. And just for what, maybe two weeks ago, Manati has zero cases. And I think right. they're up to maybe two or three. Right. So definitely the curfew is definitely working on the island. You know, I got to say T that. Tell me about this nursing home because, you know, that's really the most vulnerable part in the country right now, right? right. Nursing homes. So what, right. what's well, the situation my, where you are? This building is not, it's not technically a nursing home. It's a hub facility for seniors. So, but I do have a lot of people here that are bedridden with home, uh, homemates. Uh, most of this building is actually people with the uh, motorized wheelchairs and the walkers. But I'll show you a quick thing. One of the things we did here, let me see if I could flip this, is we have a lot of our residents here come down to the lobby and this is where they hang out at so we actually had to block the entire lobby out and force the residents that do want to leave their res their apartments we can't confine them to their apartments they have to go outside um so we're here to try to stop the family members that want to come in um friends and family that want to see their you know, the grandparents, her parents, they got to, unfortunately, they got to go outside to see them. Um, we have the uh, dispensers at the door to sanitize. So no matter if you're a resident or not, you walk into this building, you got to go ahead and sanitize your hands. We're making all the residents wear gloves and masks. Uh, the owner of the building provided uh, masks and gloves for the whole building. So um, we have about 400 plus residents. We're up to five succumb to it and we have about eight confirmed that are um, falling ill so um, it just started picking up in this building uh, we'll see how we'll see how long it lasts management's constantly cleaning sanitizing the elevators and everything here so yep what about the fire department where you're the captain which department uh east orange okay how uh, yeah. what's the what's the flow like there so we all got masks on while we're inside the firehouse. We got the N95s. Some of us got the surgicals. Some of us got the respirators. Um, when we go on calls, though, we um, if it is a medical call or if it is a forcible entry for EMS, I'm, a, I'm actually a truck person, so I do a lot of the braking. So we go on calls like that. We actually implemented standing operating procedures where we have to don our whole face piece on and go our oxygen. This way, we're not going through surgical mask or N95 mask on a daily basis. So um, that actually uh, seems to be working very well. And then we're not like letting an alternative. Right. And then we, on a regular call, we'll have anywhere from three to five fire trucks going. 
but only the first two captains are only going inside to investigate. And if we need other personnel, we'll bring other personnel into the building to try to eliminate, you know, contamination into the, into the firehouse. That's really smart. Save on personnel, save on equipment. That's smart. Uh, yep. Well, Hector, I'm glad we could get you on, man. No, I appreciate it. I've been trying for so long. You actually accepted me about uh, two, three days ago, and I got a phone call, and it kicked me out. And I got on the phone with my mom in Puerto Rico. I'm like, oh, my God, I got through David, and then somebody called me. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad your parents are well, and uh, congratulations on the, on the wedding. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, man. Be well, Hector. All right. You too, David. Let's see. So if you want to join in, you can do uh, one of two things. You can press the button to come in, or you can write in the comments section below. If you write in the comments section below, just give me an idea of exactly what you would like to talk about. So I, I have an inkling. Uh, I also wanted to... Where is that screen grab? Let me see if I have it. I wanted to address another message that I got, but I don't, I don't know if I have that message on here. Doo -doo. No, I don't think I have the message on here yet. Oh, well, that's okay. I can do it later. I don't know if you guys heard, but the uh, the governor of Maryland posted some pictures earlier uh, showing that a plane from South Korea landed in Maryland over the weekend with 500,000 test kits, you know, because there, since there is no national plan to test people, uh, it's really states are out for themselves. And so the state of Maryland, I didn't know this, but uh, the first lady of Maryland um, is Korean, I believe, uh, so she's fluent. Uh, and she was able, according to the New York Times, actually, to help her husband, the governor of Maryland, uh, work with a lab in South Korea to secure 500,000 tests that arrived in the state over the weekend. So um, is this it? Yeah, there's the picture. That's the governor's tweet. On Saturday, the First Lady and I stood at BWI, the airport, where a Korean air passenger plane carrying a very important payload of lab gun COVID-19 tests arrive, they will give Maryland the capability of performing a half million coronavirus tests. So the plane, the first lady, and the governor standing there on the tarmac. And we will bring in our next guest. Hello, Hello there. David, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing great, doing great. I got an update for you. You got an update for me. Okay, yeah, go with the I'm update. Remember last time we talked, did not have my, my furniture, my move was stuck for like two months? I remember. So tell everybody, last time I think we spoke, you were in Bayamon. You had just moved back to the island, correct? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So now uh, I just received a call today that the rules have been shifted enough. I'm getting everything tomorrow. Oh, this is good. So, oh, my goodness. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so relieved also. Um, and, you know, it's it's been... Uh, it's been actually pretty, pretty great. Just went out on a plant buying trip for my wife. Um, I got some uh, vegetable plants and some stuff because, you know, just to uh, to do some self-sustaining, you know, growing some some vegetables and doing all that sustainability, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I just wanted to drop by, say hi uh, and, uh, you know, give everybody, a, a, you know, uh, you know, my best wishes and, you know, that everything will be OK and all right and. And much love to you all. Thank you. And this is a good chance to remind everybody. Uh, your name's Javier, right? Yes, my name's Javier, yes. It's a good chance to remind everybody, Javier, that the ports in Puerto Rico are open. So ships are still arriving uh, with, yes. things like, with things like luggage, food, all that kind of stuff. So uh, the ports are open. And the airport in San Juan is still open to the chagrin of the governor. Yeah, and, and that's a... Uh, a point of uh, uh, debate right now internally on the population, right? Yeah. Uh, some people are, are talking about how, oh my gosh, we're bringing all these possible cases in from, you know, your New Yorks, the Massachusetts, the Connecticut, you know, where where there's a lot of cases. And some people are like, but those people were supposed to be here anyways. So definitely a point <laughs> of contention, <laughs> definitely. Well, Javier, I'm glad you get yeah. this stuff tomorrow, man. Stay safe.
Awesome. You as well. Much love, David. All right, buddy. Take care. You too. Thought y'all might want to see some pictures of our boy, uh, his dog walker, um, who is still allowed to work in New York City and is still working. Uh, took him out. And these are some of the pictures that she sent me. And Paddington is the friendliest dog you have ever met. You've never met a friendlier dog. And the thing that brings him the greatest amount of joy is actually playing with other puppy dogs. Anytime we go around and he sees another dog, he starts crying because he wants to play with all the puppy dogs in the neighborhood. So the pictures that I get back are the absolute best. Paddington is, uh, he actually just turned eight months old. Jeremy sent me a reminder. Yeah, he just, he just turned eight months old. So I know pictures are so cute, aren't they? So again, in the comment section below, if you have something specific that you'd like to talk about, um, it's always nice to have uh, an idea of, of what you want to talk about before I bring you in. So you can post in the comment below about what you'd like to talk about, and then, and then I can bring you in. Uh, while I'm sifting through my photos, I don't know what it is about rainbows in Puerto Rico. I mean, we had a hell of a rainbow in New York City recently, but the pictures that I was sent uh, recently, oh my God, look at this. I think that was Rincon, and this might have been from Bayamon. It's just crazy town. Just crazy town. Anyway, uh, unemployment benefits in Florida. Happy to talk about that. says waiting, waiting. I am 71 years old. Can I get tested? And I live in Florida. Uh, let's see if we can bring in this lady. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. We can't see you well. Tilt your phone down just a little bit. Okay, I'll do that. Can you tilt it down? Yeah. There you go. So there what is your go. name, ma'am? My name is Linda Sanchez. Hello, Miss Sanchez. So where are you in Florida? I am in Sanford. Sanford, Florida. Okay. Uh, your, your question was, can you get tested? Is that correct? Yes. Are they doing testing for the uh, coronavirus here in Sanford. Uh, well, I, I would assume, though I can't say for sure. Oh, she's breaking up. Can you hear me? I hear you. You broke up just a little bit. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can okay, hear you. Good. Okay, good. So regarding the testing in Sanford, I don't know the specifics of your area, but I will tell you this. If they are testing, it is most likely that they are testing people who are having symptoms right? Oh, so there's, okay. two there's two different things that we're seeing around the country. In New York okay. State, for example, most testing, not all, but most testing is happening at hospitals, okay? Okay. People who are going in with symptoms. There are areas that are doing drive-through testing. So what you'll want to do and what I would encourage you to do is check with number one, your doctor, and number okay. two, with your city hall they'll be able to give you the guidance in terms of where and if they are doing testing. Are you having any symptoms right now? No, not at all. I woke up today with a little bit of a uh, sore throat. Yeah. But it went away. Okay, good, good. Yeah. And you're, you're isolated? Yes, I am. I have been for the past month. Looks like a pretty day there in Sanford. <laughs> it is pretty. It is pretty. It's like maybe 80, 80 degrees. Good. I just moved down here seven months ago. From where? From Miami. Oh, oh so you moved up. I moved up. You moved up. Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank you so much for loving us, the Puerto Rican people. I I'm Puerto Rican. I definitely love you guys. You know, I just yeah. have another idea. When we get off of here, uh, you may want to go to your Sanford City Hall website and okay. go see if they have any information on there. But again, you are in, Sanford is in, how far are you from Orlando? 
Uh, 45 minutes. Yeah, okay, so you're in the Orlando TV market. If you don't get an answer, call, uh, call the Orlando TV station, the CBS affiliate there, WKMG. Okay. Um, and uh, tell them I told you to call. And, and ask I sure they, will. <laughs> if they have any information about Sanford. Okay, Ms. Sanchez? Okay, thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. You're very and welcome, we love love. you. We love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, we need an update for New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven, Connecticut, I don't have an update for. I do not have an update for New Haven, Connecticut. All right, let's see. What's your opinion of phase one being mentioned in the news and by the government? Well, hello there. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, are you a nurse? No, I work, I, I work at a facility that we assist um, parents who have sick children. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're taking our precautions here. Smart. What's your name? Soraya. Soraya. Okay. So <laughs> your question to me was, what's my opinion on the phase one, mm -hmm. right? So uh, look, I, I don't know if I have an opinion other than to say, uh, phase one is going to be decided by the governors. They will mm -hmm. decide whether or not they meet phase one. So the, the tricky thing, and you know the politics, you've mm -hmm. probably been following. Yeah. The White House is pretty much putting all the responsibility on the governors after the president said he had all the control. Now he's saying, no, I'm going to give the control to you guys. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the control to begin with. He wasn't telling the truth there. It's the governors through the Constitution that have the rights to do what they want. But regarding phase one, what's going to be complicated, Soraya, is figuring out who starts to develop phase one and who triggers that before the others do. What New York's governor is doing, and you may have seen this, what state are mm -hmm. you in? Miami, Florida. Okay, so <laughs> so your governor um, is a go it alone kind of guy. Um, yeah. Who is, uh, I, I say go it alone. He's not working with other governors, so to speak. And what I mean by that is the governor of New York has said, I'm gonna implement a plan with the coordination of Connecticut, New Jersey, uh, but but the context to that is Connecticut and New Jersey and New York are right by each other. So that's why mm -hmm. they have to work with each other. Florida Makes doesn't sense, necessarily yeah. have to work with somebody else so they mm -hmm. can do it alone. And there's really no criticism that should be directed to them. They don't have to work with Alabama or Georgia. They can work by mm -hmm. themselves. But, Let me take this uh, off a little bit. <laughs> I can breathe sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> but that, that's, that's what's going to be interesting is, is who triggers phase one. And if your state goes ahead and says, OK, we've entered phase one and we're going to do this, uh, what happens with Georgia if they haven't said yes? Or Alabama, which mm -hmm. are the states that are, you know, connected, kind of, yeah, kind of connected. So uh, it'll be interesting. I don't, I don't know if I have an opinion. I just I think it's become a bit of a mess with yeah. there being no national plan to streamline testing, for example. So if you were watching the start of our town hall, the governor of Maryland went to South Korea to purchase 500,000 tests because yeah. he's doing everything he has to do. And what it's doing is it's setting up competition between states, which in this case is not healthy. It's exactly. not healthy, no pun yeah. intended. It's mm -hmm. dangerous mm -hmm. because Maryland may not have the money that California has. California may not have the money that, you know, Illinois has. I don't know. Yeah. People are asking, uh, watching this, are asking, what is phase one? The government, uh, the federal government, the White House, has proposed phases one, two, and three for reopening America, as they call it. So I would encourage you all to Google that to find out what phase one means. So Yeah, it's so a, I mean, it's just of concern, you know. I mean, at least in our city here, um, you know, at least our mayor has been very strict, you know, that a few beaches have opened up in North uh, Florida and Jacksonville. And I thought that they were open here, but it's, you know, it's, if everything starts open up again, it's going to get a little bit crazy. What's your opinion on the open beaches in Jacksonville? Um, it's just that, you know, I mean, you can't control it. People are going to do whatever they want. You know, they're already being isolated too long. And I think it was, I think it was too drastic. I understand that maybe there were not that many cases up there, but at least here we're, you know, our mayor is being strict and I like that. I think that we're not ready for, for all that. I mean, I guess we have to do by phase and, I, and, and I'm sure they'll make the right decision. Um, I have a trust on our, on our mayor. I do. And that's the mayor of Miami. Yes. 
We have two actually, you know, the city of Miami and Miami Dade. So we have right, two. Right, Miami Dade, but the mayor of Miami tested positive for the virus. I recovered. know. He was the first one and he recovered. Yeah. 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 And I heard he gave a plasma donation. Mm -hmm. As well, yeah. He has been, I think both of them have been wonderful to everybody. Yeah. yeah. I have a good opinion about both of them. So, but anyway, we're still here working and we'll do what is best. It's actually refreshing to hear somebody talk favorably about their elected officials. Well, they're no, there. I no, know. no, no. I'm, I'm saying it's great. I'm, I'm not saying yeah. you speak ill of them. It's, it's, it's refreshing most of the time. They have I been. Hate. They have been. I like what I, they have been very proactive. Yeah, very most proactive of the time because. I, uh, yeah, yeah. At least in some things, I have to yeah. say, you know, yeah. being Listen. cautious. But um, everybody does things that are right from time to time. And exactly. I, uh, and this situation going on, you know, whether sometimes you make good decisions or bad decisions, everybody has opinions about it, whether they're good or bad. But at least, you know, I think I they're doing that. the best that they can. We have to trust them at some point. I hear that. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I don't want to be in their That's right. shoes. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we could bring you in. Sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hello. I didn't even realize. Oh, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. I'm no, so sorry. I was just getting that, dressed. I'm sorry. Hello. Wow, that's, that's terrible. Oh, that's okay. Wow. No problem. Okay. Anyway, just, well, no. as you see, I'm getting ready. I'm getting dressed with my child behind me. I apologize. I didn't know I was going to be on live yet. It's, I apologize. It's, it's all it's all good. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> so I, embarrassing. You, sorry. You, you, you just no, I'm a, a professional, so I am sorry. I'm well, here no, with you my just mother. had a. Sorry. You, had a you had a color on, which for a minute I thought, oh my lord, is no, that no, 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 it's Shanna. Is that a okay, good. This okay, is a okay. news, okay. Hello, how are you? Let me reintroduce myself. I'm, I'm dressed. What is your name? My name is Kayla. How are you? Kayla, I'm well. Where are you in the world? I am in New York. Okay, where in New York? In the Bronx. In the Bronx. Tell us about your new normal. What do you want us to know? Okay, so actually, I'm, my, no my new normal is something that's tolerable, but I'm an activist. I'm a criminal justice reform activist. And three years ago, I was in Puerto Rico. And um, because I do work nationally, I realized that my council, which is called the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls, where we provide a platform to stand up for women that are going through conditions and then when they get out, which I was formerly incarcerated, to become a leader so that we could really affect change on a level that says, hey, I was once there, so I kind of, was a part of the problem, so I know the solution, and I want to see it at the table because I have relevance. I come from experience, so what I say needs to be taken into consideration, and we need to collaborate and work together to, you know, come up with solutions because clearly the solutions that we have right now are not solutions. They are, um, they they look like solutions, but things that continue to keep people in oppressive situations. You know. All right. So with that being said, I went to Puerto Rico and I said, you know what? We don't have this in Puerto Rico, so I want to bring it to Puerto Rico. I want to know what's going on in Puerto Rico with the women. And I want to go in there and talk to them and meet with them and identify their needs because they are people and they will be returning to society. And so I was granted access by the grace of God. I went to, um, where was it located? It's in San Juan somewhere, the Department of Corrections, the place that, the headquarters where you would go and say, hello, I would like to establish a relationship so I could go inside of your prison. Because they're not just going to say, here's the key, unlock the door and go in the prison. Who are you? So I explained, you know, my name is Kayla. I'm from New York. I'm an activist. I'm very passionate. I'm formerly incarcerated. I have a story that I know that I got through to help other people get through things. So they let me inside of the prison and I witnessed things in there that, you know, hurt me to a core. You know, it was the first time I ever walked back into a prison. And um, I met a woman and her name is Christine. And when I was meeting, I met with, I met with six women, two women in, um, in minimum population, two women in medium population, and two women in max. So I asked them all to write their names so they would be a part of this council. And we're going to come together and figure out resources. When I looked to the woman to the left of me and I saw her time, it said 99 years. And she's a beautiful young girl. So I was very like, I was, I was taken back. I said, 
you have 99 years. What do you mean? For what? She said, for a crime I didn't commit. And I said, you know what? I can't talk to you about this right now, but here's my number. Call me and I'm going to see what I can do for you. Her name is Christine Cortez Rodriguez. She was living in Puerto Rico because she met a man there after visiting her grandmother who lives in Ponce. She's born in Puerto Rico, but lived in the States. She met this man and she got into a relationship with him. And, you know, domestic violence is very common where somebody thinks that they own you and control you. And at moments you could think that that's love because someone's protecting you, but then it's a cycle where you might get hit today and flowers tonight and then flowers at your grave. Okay, all, has, all the moving is getting me a little dizzy. So I'm sorry, you, I'm sorry, you, I'm pacing, okay. I apologize. I'm just, it's just, you know, I didn't, I didn't even think I'd get access to you. So I'm sorry, I'm just like a little, you know. Okay, so, so. So basically I'm fighting for a woman who has, is in prison right there for, in Puerto Rico for 99 years for a crime she didn't commit. And I'm trying to bring justice to her case and to the conditions inside of the prison in Puerto Rico. Because right now they are, the wave hasn't hit, but the the population is affected by it very badly. She's getting sick. She has diabetes. And I believe that right now we need to stand up for people that don't deserve to die in jail. We need alternatives and we really need to figure out how do we protect people that we might think are, are nothing and throwaways, but their family members, mothers, fathers, human beings that don't deserve to die because of, you know, just ignoring them and, and saying that their crimes make them sentenced to death. So what are you able to do to help her and how are you able to prove that she's innocent? Okay, so right now what I'm doing to help her, I got in touch with a lawyer hang uh, on, in hang Puerto on, Rico. Hang on, the, mo the moving I'm is sorry. making us all dizzy, honey. I saw, I'm sorry. So I got in touch with a lawyer in Puerto Rico. His name is Yusef Lamboy and he's an attorney out there. And I was recommended by him because I have put in a petition to the governor to pardon her because when she was, her, her, her baby died of a crib death, they thought, because she let her, the boyfriend put the baby to bed and she wanted to go to sleep. When she woke up, the guy was standing over the baby's um, crib and was like, oh my God, she's dead. They thought it was a crib death. Six months later, an autopsy report came back and they were both pulled in for questioning. And when they told her what happened, she was crying. She's like, what do you mean? Like there was, um, there was like, um, trauma to the head so they, they could sense that there it wasn't just a crib death there was other things that led to the baby dying and he automatically blamed her so based on that evidence they detained her kept her for six months let her go because they had nothing against her and told her that she would have a court date again she went back to new jersey because she couldn't stay in puerto rico okay she thought her case was over she was never contacted she she thought like okay they let me out of prison they obviously know that if they let me free, that they have nothing against me that I didn't murder my child. Then this case, it you know, she, she went on about life and it came back because another woman that she was with, another woman told, called the police living in Jersey and they came and got her and gave her 99 years based on the fact that she was a fugitive. Not because they had evidence. They never investigated this man and we're going to open a full investigation on this case and Right now, I am starting a fund, a, not a GoFundMe, but we're just, we have started a fundraiser where it's like, donate a dollar. And, you know, we're going to be accountable and show you everything throughout every process with this lawyer. We're sending him um, $3,000 to detain him, to have him put in a pardon to the governor of Puerto Rico. All right. So if people want to know more about this, uh, I'm going to give them your Instagram handle. Or why don't you just type it in the comment section? Okay. For, how's that? And I apologize for walking around like that. I just didn't even no, think no, I would fine. get this live to. So no, thanks, no, everyone. Fine. Sorry for walking around. But I didn't think that I would actually have this platform today. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity because I think that we're going to find that there's a lot of innocent people and a lot of people get forgotten about. But when you speak their name and bring light to their situation, we can all have, you know, a chance chance to affect change because anyone this could happen to anybody and you wouldn't want it to happen to your family and everyone forget about them so I just ask for people to just look into it before you judge you know I'm, I'm, I'm willing to provide paperwork and everything and accountability along the way so I'm going to give you the Instagram that is for her story and I, I created for her story and my Instagram okay okay good so yeah just type it in the comment section below and people can go there thank you so much god bless you god bless you for answering me and i really appreciate this i have to tell you because 
you know, having a voice for someone who's voiceless being given by you who has a great platform. That's this is amazing work. So thank you. Look, let me tell you something. I've covered many stories where people were released from prison because they were found to not be guilty after a second look at their case, right? But yes. there wasn't the evidence to keep them in jail. So here's the thing. I, I always come to those stories uh, realizing that you have to prove their innocence um, and that, you know, we, we can't just walk into this saying, you know, there's a lot of people in jail who want you to believe they're innocent. No, you have to ask not. questions. You have to, do your, course, you have to do your research. It's all about 100%. the facts. And I'm so not, when, and I'm absolutely. So when somebody like you is willing to do the research, uh, I, the degree to which people are willing to listen uh, is, is worth it and good. Because, you know, listen, there are people in jail who are innocent. And so there are, there are those stories who need to be told. So I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're working on it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And my I, I gave everybody my Instagram. So if you have any information or any questions, I can provide all paperwork. I'm accountable. And, you know, I'm not going to just not to say she's innocent because I said so or because she told me because that's not real. Thank okay, you. Good. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you. The walking was a little dizzying, wasn't it? But I'm glad we could at least get her on. Okay, somebody keeps talking about missing boys. Hi, David. How are you? I'm good. So what's going on? So um, I've been following a dad on Instagram that I guess five weeks ago, um, two of the boys were by a, a Hudson River and one jumped in. They were playing. It was like 75 degrees in New York. And the current was too strong for one of them so his friend went in and tried to help him and the current was strong for him as well and they disappeared and the other friend said that they couldn't help um so they called the police and they did a search but that was really much it and the father has been trying to get media attention and you know maybe some politicians to maybe help with the search again to try to find some kind of answers well, i'm confused it hasn't been 75 degrees in new york city in months well, supposedly this happened March 13th. March 13th. It happened, yeah, Friday the 13th it happened. Um, and I've been following the dad, and he's, you know, been trying to get the police to go out and search, but he's actually been going out on his jet ski uh, with a few of his friends to kind of see if he sees anything, but he hasn't really gotten answers. And I said, the only person I can think of that can maybe cover this and get some kind of attention is you. Well, uh, has he reported them missing? Yes, they had, um, the police did go. Um, yeah, it was thir the 13th of, was a Saturday. It was Friday the 13th. I know that. I wasn't sure if it, what month it was. I want to say it was March, but I'm not sure. Um, but he's, he's, he's been needing help. The police do searches, but, you know, they go for like an hour or two, and then they say that's, that's pretty much what we can do. So I see, uh, I see an article right here, the New York Times. Mm -hmm. The New York Times did cover it, and then yeah. I believe the Post, but he wants to try to get as well, like the, the media to help him with some kind of search or find a group that can help with the search. Um, it, it's just been really hard for him to, to get answers. Well, well, you know, and the unfortunate thing is that it's happening in the middle of a pandemic, so he's fighting that's, for... That's the tough part. Yeah, that's the tough part that, yeah, you know, I... Yeah. I that I kind of get, yeah. but I just feel bad because I'm a mom, and I, I, I couldn't imagine, um, you know, something like that happening and not having some kind of... Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking here. So I, the Post reports item apparently belonging to one of the lost Hudson River boys found as search continues. Um, the father was on a live today, um, and supposedly they said they, they searched um, a couple times for like about an hour, and that was it. And, you know, he's been going out on his jet ski, which he has posted on his Instagram, trying to see if he sees anything. Or, But, I mean, at this point, you know, he needs like sonar and stuff, and it, it's it actually, not easy. Yeah, and one of the – I was trying to see if they sent divers in. 
f from what he said, from what I understood from the live today, I don't think they sent divers. I want to say that they just searched the area and the boats, and that was it. But no, nothing has been searched in the water. I want to say they just did um, kind of like a, a boat, you know, ride by to kind of see if they saw it. What anything. is the father's Instagram? I can DM that to you. I don't know it by heart. Why don't, why don't you post it in the comments below for people who want to follow it? Okay. Uh, and then you can also send it to me. Okay, perfect. I'm going to send it to you and then I'll post it right down below in the comments so people can follow. Um, he's just been really desperate to try to get some kind of answer. Uh, I'm just reading from the post here. Detectives were overheard telling family members huddled together as they watched a half dozen NYPD divers scour the river that they had found a pair of glasses which a relative recognized as belonging to one of the teams. So there was probably a search with divers, but there hasn't been anything else. And I guess they just want to see if they can get any more searches and maybe get some kind of answers. Right. And I just, right. like I said, I'm, I'm a mom and I just feel bad seeing, you know, the stories and the picture and, you know, he, I haven't seen it really covered other than the post and the times, but, you know, he just wants to try to get where maybe someone can also volunteer to a group to, to help. Um, maybe if they have even like sonar or something that they can help. Well, and the reality is how do you do that in a climate like I, this? I um, so send me uh, message me his Instagram and uh i will i will take a look okay and i just want to say I, i'm puerto rican and thank you so much for what you have done for puerto rico you are you are amazing and uh keep doing it because we need people to focus on puerto rico when no one else is focusing on puerto rico always 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 thank you thank you so much david bless you and stay safe you're very welcome thank you cute little kid in the background Hi. Hi. Do you have an update? I recognize you. You do? Yeah. You're the pregnant so... lady from Puerto Rico who was having trouble getting testing. Yeah, I didn't get it done. I ended up going to my doctor. Like, I, and... I had a doctor's appointment. And, and I just, I think I needed to relax. You think you need to relax? Yeah. I mean, like, second trimester pregnancy is very similar. You get, like, a dry cough because the air, you're, you're just, you're a mess. What did the doctor tell you? So I was explaining that to him. Like, I've been freaking out because I, I had to go in by myself. My partner couldn't go in. And that made me anxious. And I had to wear a mask and gloves. And I was just, like, real anxious. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I've been really anxious. All this stuff is happening. I can't, like, call you and come see you whenever I want. And um, I was like, I've been experiencing this, like, shortness of breath and blah, blah, blah. And she was just like, don't worry about it. Like, you're fine. That's normal. It's all normal. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Yeah, I got a humidifier, so my life has changed. Okay, okay. You think <laughs> so, it was a little anxiety? Yeah, so that was the other thing I want to talk about. I've been, like, up and down, and some days I'm just, like, because it's so strict over here, you can't do anything. Yeah, like, you can't, can't go exercise. out. You can't do shit. So I'm like, yeah. sorry, I swear a lot. But, <laughs> um, no, so now nothing. I just try to, like, my, my boyfriend keeps me really calm. It's like, babe, it's fine. Like, we're, we're in this together. Just find something to do. Like, play video games. Here, like, we we find stuff to do. I think it's just about relaxing and trying not to, you know, over overdo it in your mind. Because I was reading somewhere that when you get stressed out, your immune system actually goes down. So mm. I've been trying to, like, breathe, listen to music, walk around, pace in the house. We live on a dead end. Pace yeah, but listen, dead end. Don't, but, but don't beat yourself up for it. I mean, you know, the way no. that a lot of people have anxiety, uh, especially induced by what's going on now. I mean, there are people who don't, there are people who have anxiety when there's not a pandemic, right? So the oh, pandemic yeah, kind of piles on top of that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up for it. You look like you have more energy. You look more alert. Yeah, I'm with it today. I'm like, I wake up early now. I don't even know why the hell I wake up. I'm like, what's going on? Why am I up so early? I hear the what bird. Is, what's your due date? Um, September 24th. So you don't, do you know yet if it's a boy or a girl? It's a girl. 
it's a girl. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Have you picked a name? Phone. Yeah, we did, but I'm not allowed to say. I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> oh, you're sworn to secrecy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. My aunt, Got it. Everybody's been asking. They're like, what's the name? And I'm like, oh, I can't tell you. And I'm like, but you can ask me what letter it starts with. And they're like, what letter? I'm like, a letter in the alphabet. And my mom's like, I hate you. <laughs> a letter in the alphabet. Oh, my God. Gotta keep something. I can't, like, do pregnancy photos. I can't do uh, the baby shower. You know, I was thinking about that, too. Like, you take all that stuff for granted, you know, when you're just out in the world. And then now that I can't do it, I'm like, shit, I wish I could do it. Like, I hated gender reveal parties. And now I'm like, I wish I could have done that. I don't have a choice now. I can't do it even if I wanted to. You know what I haven't seen is a virtual gender reveal party. <laughs> I wanted to do that. I was like looking on Amazon. I'm like, I could like send these to people and they can crack it with me. It's like a little egg and it tells them if it's a boy or girl. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to call people and tell them and let them just see the reaction. That's tell funny. It. That's but, funny. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you're feeling better. This was this was an important update to get because you sent me your pictures. There was a picture of you in the parking lot and you were all nervous. And so you saw yeah, your doctor. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm relaxed. I'm calm. You're good. Good. Just chilling. Good. Good. That's a yeah. that's a that's a very good update. A happy update. That's a very happy update. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it to us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on again. You're welcome, love. Bye. Take care. Bye. So look at this little guy right here. Paddington, you want to say hi? They're all looking at you. They're all looking at you. I know I show pictures of him sleeping all the time, and he doesn't sleep all the time. Lord, I wish he did. But uh, he just came back from his one-hour walk, so he's, you know, he's, he's a bit tired. But that's what the walks are for. We tire his butt out. We tire him out. All right, so uh, give me an idea in the comments section below uh, what you may want to talk about, and then I can bring you in that way. No, he, Paddington is not eating random things today. I also found a way to tire him out. I live on a, you know, I live at the end of a hallway. And so I'll bring him out and just throw the ball back and forth and just wear his butt out. Just wear his butt. No, it is definitely not moonshine. It is a uh, water, but I love a good Mason jar. I love a good Mason jar. So that's what I. That's what I use. Uh, yes, I am in New York City. So I'm seeing that uh, the lady is posting the Instagram page of the father, by the way, uh, if you guys want to have it. So somebody named Jay-Z Lolita025, I see that you want to join in, but... Uh, it says you are unable, so it may mean your account is private. It may also mean that you have to sign out and then come back in. So sorry about that. Let's see. So this man brings up something that we can talk about. David, PR, COVID-19 deaths are not precise. They have counted deaths as COVID-19 deaths with no tests. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Uh, the guidance from the CDC, uh, from the federal government is, to the states is the following. If you have a patient at a hospital who presents with symptoms of COVID-19, is being treated for COVID-19, has chest x-rays that show bilateral pneumonia being pneumonia in both lungs, uh, and has all the other symptoms of COVID-19. If that patient dies before you can do a test, either because the test is not available or for whatever reason you didn't perform a test, that, death, that death is to be listed as a COVID-19 death 
if the doctor writes COVID-19 on the death certificate. So um, if that's what you're responding to, uh, that is in fact the case, that the death toll in Puerto Rico, but not just Puerto Rico, this is happening in the States as well, uh, that the death toll includes people who had a COVID-19 test and tested positive, and it includes people who did not have a COVID-19 test, but were treated for COVID, uh, died from what the doctors believe are COVID and have COVID-19 written on their death certificate. So just wanted to address uh, that question. Uh, in your honest opinion, when do you think the New York, uh, think New York will be done with the shutdown? Uh, I don't know, that's a really good question. Um, New York is the hottest of hotspots anywhere in the country. Uh, there were more than 500 people uh, who died within the last 24 hours. And I, I want to share this with you because when I saw this today, it was a staggering reminder. Uh, one of my colleagues actually put this out a little earlier today. Um, the first death related to COVID-19 that was reported uh, in the United States, the very first death was seven weeks ago. As of today, there are more than 41,000 deaths. 41,000 people have died from COVID-19 in the last seven weeks. 41,000 people in seven weeks. Let's see if we have another question. So Jay-Z is back. Jay-Z love, it still says that you are not able to join in. So not quite sure why, but it still says you're not able to join in. How do I self-quarantine when four members of the family tested positive? Yeah, that could be quite a challenge. Um, there have been stories where I've seen where family members had someone who tested positive and they literally went and stayed in a bedroom. But, you know, look, we have one of our colleagues, Chris Cuomo, uh, who works at CNN, not with me at CBS News, but he tested positive. He was down there in his basement. His wife was caring for him minimizing her exposure um, to some degree, and now she has tested positive. So uh, yeah, it's, it's super challenging to stay away from somebody who's got it, especially if you live under the... Oh, let's see. So 413, we probably have, I don't know, what do, what do we think we have, five minutes left or so? I think we have, probably have five minutes left. All right, let's see. You guys are sending me a lot of questions here. Let's see. All right, so this is a question somebody asks uh, that all of you can weigh in and answer. Would you rather have a healthy economy, uh, healthy people or a better economy? Healthy people or better economy? Uh, I don't think you have to you choose between one or the other. I think you can work to have both, but you guys feel free to weigh in. Let's see. Do you know anything about Massachusetts? Uh, I don't know a ton about Massachusetts other than uh, the cases there are rising and Massachusetts may be one of the hot spots in the country within the next five to seven days. Uh, but regarding specifics, I don't, I don't know a whole lot of specifics. Um, let's see. Paddington, where did you go, my boy? What are you doing over there? All right, let's see. Pneumonia symptoms are the same for COVID-19. Uh, so you do have a lot of people who present at the hospital with symptoms of shortness of breath, 
they get checked and they do have this bilateral pneumonia, right? So pneumonia in both lungs. And that is a very clear indicator early on of COVID-19. Every, every physician that I've spoken to has said that if I have someone who comes in and has bilateral pneumonia, uh, they test positive for COVID. It's a guarantee. And because tests are not readily available around the United States, uh, many doctors move forward with isolation uh, immediately before the test can even be done. Because remember, uh, in, in many places, the test can take a day or two or three or four. So you don't have four days to wait. You immediately isolate that patient. And then once they are isolated, uh, you know, you, you basically start treating them as they have COVID before you know that they have COVID because you can't wait the time that it takes. All right. Boy, you guys are dropping a lot of questions in this mailbox here. Did you hear that all the schools closed in Ohio like an hour ago? Uh, no, I did not get that update from Ohio. I thought Mike DeWine, the governor of Ohio, had closed down schools for the rest of the year. So I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about there. Uh, well, you guys love this uh, just write David questions format, don't you? I can see that you all love that. There have got to be 50 questions right here. <laughs> hey, David, how are you? I'm well. What's your name? Good. It's Matthew. I'm calling for an update, but also because my, my nephews in Massachusetts also wanted to say hi to you. They didn't believe me that I spoke with you about almost two weeks ago. <laughs> they didn't believe you, Uncle Matthew. They didn't. And they're still so here at home. So let me know if you want if you want three boys and one girl, you could babysit them for free if you'd like. They love the dog. Oh, oh boy. What's your what's your uh what's your update? Um so our update here is that we're still we're still bunkered in at home. Yeah. Um where, you know we're not able you? We're in Massachusetts. Yeah. Where in Mass? Um so actually I came to my sister's house. She lives in Fitchburg. I'm from Worcester, but she's here in Fitchburg. Okay. I have to go spend some time with her and my nephews because it's just, it's kind of boring, you know? We're all taking care of each other. We're doing the precautions that we have to do. We're, did, you, um, did you dye your hair? You gave yourself a little quarantine dye? I did. He's funny. He noticed. <laughs> I did. I did. It was a bet that I lost with my nephew, so I had to uh, withhold uh, my side of the, my that side. Makes you, that makes you the cool uncle. Where yeah. are the kids? Let's say, let's say hello. You want to say hi to David? Hi. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Oh, the dye here runs in the family, sorry. <laughs> what's your name? Alex. Alex, who else is with you, Alex? Alex, Jerry, wanna say hi? Hi, David. Hey there. How you been? I'm good, how about you? Good. You wanna, to see, my, alive. You wanna <laughs> see my puppy dog? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, show me a dog. Yeah, where's your dog? John just has him. Oh, John, he's on. Paddington, back up. They want to see you. No, I'm trying to. So how you hanging out? With, how you hanging in with this quarantine? Uh, trying to hang in there. I really just wanted to get out there, go to Worcester, see my other parts of family. Mm -hmm. How is it having your uncle Matthew? Good. He helps with a lot at the house. That's, oh, that's sweet. That's good. Don't well, Uncle Matt, I'm glad you could get uh, back in, and I'm glad you've got some company now. Yes, thank you. And thank you for um, just saying hi to us, David. They really appreciate it. Of course. Hi, buddy. Hi. All right. Take hi care. That's a, that's a cute puppy dog. What's the puppy's name? What's his name? Max. 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 Boy, y'all all got great hair. Great hair runs in that family. <laughs> thank you. Curls for days, man. <laughs> um, all right. Well, listen, Matthew, I'm glad we could get you back in. Thank you so much. Take care. You're welcome. Be well. You too. Y'all are killing me with all these questions. Look at this. It says 50, it says 51 questions. Oh, but we only have a minute left. I just got my minute mark. So uh, we'll, oh, let's see. No. All right, so we will end it here with 53 seconds left. So uh, have a wonderful day. That'll be our new normal town hall for today. Uh, good to end on a happy note, right? With people smiling.
So we will do it again, but now I gotta go get ready. So the rest of my day is going to be exercise and then get ready for tomorrow morning, CBS this morning. So hello from Germany. Oh, we got somebody from Germany. Hello to you. Uh, 30 seconds left, 27, 26, 25. What are you getting all friendly about now? Now you wanna play. Time to go play. Y'all have a good day. Bye.